Uh, we ready? Roll on. Well, this project started out like I would imagine most big projects start out, with a good friend and an idea. Then, together with my papa, we worked on that idea, revised it, and together as grandpa and grandson, we were able to come up with an end product that was better than we could have ever imagined. It took a lot of hard work, and there were many things that we just weren't prepared for. But with prayer and a fair bit of research, we were able to overcome all the obstacles that we came across. Most importantly, we worked on this together, which means at the end of the day, we not only have a great sounding violin, but we have a closer relationship as a family, and that's special. Now that it's done, it's time to reflect and revisit those first few notes for a bit. Of course, I couldn't have done it without my papa. He's mighty proud of me. Now people just want to know how we did it. Well, that's what this is about. My grandson Jonathan approached me one day and asked uh, about building an electric violin. And he wanted to know if that's something that I thought that we could do together. And I said, sure, I think we can. And so we talked about it for quite a while. And finally, we, uh, about July of 2010, we actually started on it. When I was younger, I used to sign my name as many ways as I could. And um, one of them was with the J at the bottom and the H in the middle and the W at the top. And one day I was looking at this signature and I turned it upside down and I was like, wow, I could see a violin being shaped like that. It was after I had seen the Mark Wood design, the Viper, and how his had the flying V shape um, to it. I decided to say, well, what if I made a JHW violin? And that's when I went to my grandpa about it and uh, he seemed excited about the idea. We decided to make an electric violin because Jonathan and I both thought that an acoustic violin would be something that would be over our heads at this time. Uh, we have gone to acoustic violin shops in Nashville and, and uh, seen them starting them and with all of the many, many molds that they have to make prior to shaping and forming. And uh, the material is so thin, uh, I didn't want to attempt that. Another big reason why we chose to do an electric violin is just because of the versatility of it. There's so many different sounds and ideas that you can make with the electric violins that are a lot harder to make those sounds and ideas clear on an acoustic violin. Here's another great sound that I get with the JHW violin. <laughs> The first step that, that we did when we first started was I had John to come up with the design and actually draw it out. We did a few measurements from my old violin um, and we took a photocopy of a violin off of the internet and zoomed it into size and posted that on a piece of styrofoam and that's what we used to make our cuts on our first uh, draft of the violin I guess. Um, we used that and cut out the, the, the main portion of the violin but we decided after we had cut it out that we needed to draw some working drawings so we used uh, the model where we had to begin cutting and started from there to actually create drawings. My papa then decided that he would take it under his initiative to use his many years of drafting class to draw up the plans, draw up the schematics for the violin and um, use some of his skills in that manner to really make this project have a direction. We were very anxious about making cuts on this violin. Uh, we would talk about it, we would go to the saw, 
we would go back and talk about it again before we would ever make the first cut. Every cut, I had my fingers crossed, I, and, and we were praying like nobody's business because we were so nervous that something was going to go wrong. The most challenging part of this project for me was getting the angle of the fingerboard. Uh, we used a solid piece of wood that was a little more than an inch and a half thick, and to taper the fingerboard and get the proper drop and still have enough wood left was a challenge. I have an awful lot of respect for what my grandpa can do with uh, wood and the machinery that he uses out in his shop because I personally have never made anything like this before. I've, I've never used some of the tools that he was using. I have no idea, you know, when he says he needs to use this saw or this type of hammer or this type of nail even or whatever he's talking about, I, I oftentimes don't even know uh, where he's going with it. But he always seems to be able to take what's in my head and put it out into to reality. So I really respect what he can do. Uh, this was a more difficult project than most of the things that I've worked on because most of the things that I have worked on are pretty straightforward woodwork. And again, things like uh, the angle of the neck, uh, the placement of the bridge, uh, exactly how to put the chin rest on and, the, and to get the uh, tuning uh, area at the right angle so that the strings are, are tensioned properly created some challenges for me. That's where John's expertise on the violin came in. There are some things that I'd probably improve on this next violin if we choose to do this again. Um, one of those things would be the balance in it. It's a little heavy up at the top end of it, which makes it hard after hours of practicing or playing. Um, it makes your arm get tired. So I would probably focus a lot of attention on trying to fix that problem. We used the guitar tuners because of their ability to very fine-tune the strings and uh, it created a, a weight problem in on the neck of the violin and we believe that maybe we can uh, create some kind of a, a rest that will eliminate this problem. Even if there comes a time when I can't play violin anymore I will always have that memory of me and my grandfather out there in the tool shed working our hands to the bone trying to get this violin finished before I go back to school and it's something that not many people if no one else has and um, it's something I will cherish for the rest of my life. One of the main things that we uh, look forward to this violin being used is being used to the glory of God. Uh, God has blessed Jonathan with a wonderful talent and uh, he has used it greatly for the Lord's uh, work. He's played regularly in the worship team. He's played with a Christian rock band called Offering. Uh, and he's playing with several groups at Belmont University. And they all are, are Christian-oriented young people. And, and uh, so we've done a lot of praying for this. Um, any last things you want to say that you want to have known? Maybe I didn't ask you a question. Reflecting on this project, I would say that one of the greatest things, and I, I believe that Every grandparent should spend time with their grandchild doing something that they both love to do. And uh, getting and, and doing this, spending this time, you get to know each other. You get to enjoy each other. And uh, I think this is one of the greatest uh, benefits of being able to accomplish this. Not only having the time that we share together, but hearing my grandson play that first note on that violin.